if they have had a penetrating wound that is potentially across the diaphragm and get into the heart, if they have lost their output within 10 minutes, you are going to go through the same process every single time. You're going to delegate for a cold tube. You're going to do your bilateral finger thoracostomies. You're going to get them into the resuscitation position, which we talked about before. Crucifix, arms out, good access for both arms for ID access simultaneously. Bilateral finger thoracostomies. You're going to reassess at that point to see whether your intervention has made a difference. Then what are you going to do? Continue the incision and yeah. cut the check. So, again, bold incision from one side to the other, joining the dots. You're going to go through the skin, superconscious tissue, through into a little bit of intercostal muscle. You're then going to get your trauma shears, you're going to put your finger through the hole, and you're going to, if you have the colony space, get the person that's ventilating at that point to stop ventilating, so you lunge out of the way. You're going to divide the intercostal muscles up to the sternum on both sides. Ideally, if you've been able to get your finger thoracostomies at the same level by marking it out together as a team, then when you reach the sternum, you're going to be at the same level, and that's fine. If you're one joint space across, it means your diaphragmatic, sorry, your sternal division is going to be a bit of an angle, but hey, so be it. When you divide that sternum, some sternums are going to be very tough and you're not going to be able to get through with the tough cuts. You're going to need to then the jiggly saw through, forceps underneath, grab that cobra, as we've talked about before, pull it through, don't let it touch your fingers or your gloves because it's going to tear a hole in that gloves straight away. Divide the sternum and then you're going to make sure that your finger thoracostomies are very posterior because it gives that this clamshell as much exposure as possible. The first thing you're going to see when you look inside is going to be that the heart and the lungs and if they're ventilating you're going to know straight away where the tubes in the trachea because that lungs are going to be coming out of here and there'll be a pericardial fat pad and you're going to need to divide some of that often blunt so that there's not as any excessive bleeding afterwards if you get rust. Blunt plus take that pericardial fat pad off the posterior aspect of the sternum. And you'll have a heart in the pericardium and two lungs. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pick up that pericardial sac, quite fibrous. You're going to get either some scissors or your tough cuts and going to a bit of a cut through that. And then you're going to make an incision. You're going to make it horizontally or vertically. But so there's, yeah, there's two nerves that go on either side of the heart, and you don't want to knock off the phrenic nerves if you've got this patient alive again. So you're going to make a vertical incision, and then you're going to deliver that heart out. If there's clot in there, you're going to get the clot out and be prepared for where your position is. So often as the physician, in fact every time as a physician, remember our surgical airway, your position, I'm going to be in the left axillary, because that's the money shot, okay? Your assistant's going to be on the other side. And when you scoop that blood out, have a think about where you're going to put it. So put it out of the way, don't put it on yourself or your mate or your colleague's shoes. Because there might be a half the blood volume in that side of the chest. So be prepared for that. You're going to deliver the heart and you're going to inspect that heart in all aspects of it. Anterior, posterior. Because if you plug an anterior hole and then fill them up, it's just going to go through that posterior hole and you've done no good. So you're going to uh, uh, deliver the heart. Inspect all surfaces. Identify any holes. Close those holes, and then whilst you've got IV access before you've released that tamponade, you're then going to start filling up so that the holes in the bucket are closed. Don't waste your blood too quickly if there are already holes in the circulation. You want to wait till those holes are closed. Give them the blood, start resuscitating, internal cardiac massage. Is everyone happy with that at this point? As soon as you've got those holes in those um, bucket closed, you want someone's hand, not part of the HEMS team, flat down around the posterior reflection of the rib cage and pushing against the aorta. You want all that blood to be going to the vital organs, the heart and the brain. And you might need to create space for that person to come in and do that. Give them a glove, tell them what you want to do. I want you to put your hand palm down inside, underneath the lung, round to feel a squidgy thing. I want you to push that squidgy thing against the hard thing, which is the vertebral column, and stay there. Happy? If they start to fibrillate at that point, if they start to have some things, you can close the chest externally if you fibrillate. People talk about flicking the heart. I may or may not work. Um, uh, have a think about how you're going to manage that and what you're going to do. If they start get rosk at that point, you've got to have your drugs ready to anaesthetise them, give them some muscle relaxant. If they get rosk, you'll see blood coming out of the internal mammary arteries, you've got to clamp those off. And you've got to have a think about how you're going to get that person out of wherever they are to the nearest cardiothoracic centre at that point. Happy? Questions? 
couple of very rare instances. If you go in and the heart is pristine, there's nothing in the pericardium, but they're hemorrhaging really, really badly from the lung, you can do a hilar twist. And that is, to do that, you need to divide the, post, sorry, the inferior hilar ligament as the, the vessels come out into the, from the mediastinum into the lung. You have to divide the, the inferior hilar ligament and then you're going to grab the posterior, so the, the, the inferior portion of the lung and the superior portion of the lung, you're going to twist it upon itself into a hilar twist. And that might help the examinating bleeding stop from that side of the chest. Obviously, you can only do that to one side. <laughs> Okay. We don't carry the equipment to do a thoracic aortic clamp or a statistical clamp to clamp the hilum or anything else. People talk about white ETT, but it's less effective than a hilum twist. Happy? Questions? Cool. We're going to go through this now, slowly, step by step, so that everyone has a chance and we'll sub people in and out. Okay. Keep your fingers away so that yes. you slip. You're not going to go through your finger. Remember, it's not going to be a straight line, it's going to be almost a little bit of a butterfly incision, okay? And as you make that incision through that skin tissue, in real living or just freshly dead people, that skin will spring apart, okay? So we have good access to what you're doing. you made on the other side, <coughs> or put it, in, yeah, put it in the tray and use on the other side. Make a nice posterior thoracostomy, so if your thoracostomy is not deep enough, make it nice and posterior. We don't carry chest sprays in our kit, they're just too heavy and we do it too rarely. In the London Thames they have a lovely good spread spread of kit. If you just extend your incision yeah. posteriorly enough. So remember how we were talking about traumatic cardiac arrest, about three minutes, you can do the, almost the whole protocol. You want to be in the chest within two, two to three minutes. And you can do it, okay? So what you're going to do now is you're going to cut the in intercostal muscles, try and follow the muscles rather than accidentally cutting the ribs, because it can be a bit easier to gain a bit of purchase on that bone. Go up to the sternum. If your incision's not exactly right, you might need to extend your incision. So if you're coming up to sternum and you're starting with the skin, then divide that through here. So watch. Okay, happy with that? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Go up to sternum, pass the tra trauma shoes onto your mate on the other side. I would suggest you could try, but you're probably not going to get through sternum on the pig model. The quadruped, obviously the sternum is much more rigid in terms of its stability and walking on four limbs, and it's often a little bit uh, harder to get across. It sounded like it might have been a little bit of rib there, yeah. that's okay, just be mindful you're not going to touch it anymore because you might get a bone stick injury. Beautiful, okay, what I want to do at this point now is you want to identify your sternum, you're going to put a, a pair of forceps underneath the sternum and get it out and your mate's going to pass you your jiggly saw, remember, it's like a cobra, every time it comes near it wants to bite you and penetrate your blood. Stability, you're going to watch the flick of the thing as it comes through the sternum. You either use your forceps or use your jiggly handle to be able to get it through. Good, confident, efficient movement of it. You can see how threading that if you're sympathetically activated would yeah. be too difficult. If you have enough coffee for the day. I'm going to hold the deep distal section, touch it on the top. Nice, flat, whole use of the muscles. There's a whole use of the wire. Watch for the flick at the end. Beautiful. Okay, now at this point, pause, 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 pause. I want you to come in over here. I want you to come around this side. Just be careful. This Just be careful. There is a right stick risk. Okay. okay. Now, at the moment, because of the anatomy of the, the pig, we find that the pericardium is quite firmly attached to the posterior segment where we're going to release our fat pad and the human. Yeah. And so that the pericardium is already open. But on, what I want you to get is a sense of that pericardium being closed over the top of that. All have a little bit of a look in there and see what your anatomy is going to be like. 
And then, once everyone's had a look at the heart and the pericardium, we're going to divide that anterior stuff just blunt, and we're going to get a good exposure of the heart in there. Okay? Here, right, okay. when, you're in there, when you're getting ready, sorry for your fingers, right. if you've them, you're going to put this deep to that, and you're going to divide those, that anterior fat pad away from the things. Because it's quite fibrous and it's the pericardium and the pig, you might need to use some scissors. So watch your fingers there, Hutch. And what you're going to do in, with the human, you're going to pick up that pericardium, make a cut like that. You're going to put your vessels, uh, the scissors through that and go vertically up and down. And you're going to get good exposure then. Okay, so if you hold your hand here and Hutch, if you can hold that there, I'm going to get out of the way. I want you to come back around on this side. I want you to deliver that heart. I want you to inspect all, all sides of it as gently as possible. Remember, if you kinked up too much, all those great vessels yeah. at the top sections are going to be clamped off, so it will have no flow. And at this point, yeah, so you can see, can see how yeah. potentially you can see the, the posterior yeah. segment, okay? Okay, now, this person's been stabbed. There. Yep. What are your options in, in dealing with that wound at the moment? So finger immediately. Beautiful. Because that's going to stop yeah. the flow. And yeah. then either sutures or staples. Beautiful, okay. Have a play with putting a suture through that. Sorry, a staple through that. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Being an 18 year old male, this is now a 6 year old kid. And you have to think about the comparative anatomy, and you're going to do internal cardiac massage on this six-year-old kid that's been a bystander at a an assault, and they've had a penetrating chest injury. Whilst you're doing that, have a think about the human factors things that's going to go through your head if you're doing a thoracotomy in a six-year-old. Okay, it's it's big time. I want you to get the essence of doing this. That's it. Beautiful.